Then, at break, I was in my locker when Shelly Stones appeared out of nowhere. She got right next to me and said, I hear you're planning to bait on him. What? I took a step back. Who told you that? I am not. Someone said they saw you with a whole wad of cash this morning. How much do you have? It's, it's none of your business. And I'm not bidding, okay? I, I don't even like him anymore. She left. Oh, that of the day. It's true. I slammed my locker closed. Go ahead and waste your money on him. I don't care. I left her there with her mouth open, which felt even better than getting her in a headlock. That feeling carried me clear through to 11 o'clock, when the entire student body assembled in the gymnasium. I was not gonna beat on Bryce, Bryce Lofty, no way. Then the basket boys came out on the stage. Bryce looked so adorable, holding a picnic basket with red and white checked napkins peeking out from either side. And the thought of Shelly Stoltz flipping one of those napkins into her lap nearly made the bills in my pocket burst into flames. Darla came up behind me and whispered, Rumor is you've got a lot of cash, is that true? What? No. I mean, yes, but I... I'm not bidding. Ooh, girl, look at you. You're feeling alright? I wasn't. I felt sick. I felt sick to my stomach and shaking in the knees. I'm fine, I told her. Fine. She looked from me to the stage and back to me. You have nothing to lose but your your self-respect. Stop it. I whispered at her fiercely. It felt like I was having a panic attack. I couldn't breathe. I felt lightheaded and wobbly. Like I wasn't in control of my, control of my own body. Narawa said, maybe you should sit down. I'm fine, Darla, I'm fine. She frowned at me. I think I'll stick around to make sure. The Booster Club president, Mrs. McClure, had been flirting around the basket boys, fixing ties and giving them last minute instructions. But now suddenly she was slamming her gavel, gavel on the podium, calling into the microphone. If you'll all settle down, we're ready, we're ready to begin. I had never seen 600 kids quiet, quiet down so fast. I guess Mrs. McClure hadn't either, because she smiled and said, Why, thank you, thank you very much, then she said. And welcome to the 52nd annual basketball auction. I know that your teachers have gone over the procedures with you, with you in homeroom, but I have been asked to remind you of a few things. This is a civilized proceeding. No whistling, cat calls, or other, de other degrading beha behavior will be tolerated. If you wish to place the bid, you must raise your hand high. Bidding without raising your hand is prohibited. And should you decide, decide to, be, to be a funny guy, you will be caught and detained or suspended. Are we all clear on that? Good. She looked from one side of the gym to the, to the other. Teachers, I see that you're in position. 600's head turns, turned slowly from side to side, looking at the blockade of teachers on either, on either side of the gym. Man, Nara whispered, they're not leaving much room for fun, are they? Mrs. McClure continued, minimum bid is $10, and of course, the sky's the limit. Well, we don't set IOUs. She pointed to her right. Winning bidders should go directly to the table at the north door when I declare the basket to be sold. And as you're aware, winners and their basket boys have the rest of the school day off and and are exempt 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 from tonight's homework in all classes. She smiled out at the blockade. Teachers, we appreciate your support on this. All right then. She put on her reading glasses and looked at the looked at a three by five card. Our first basket has been brought by Jeffrey Bishop. She looked over her glasses at him and said, "Come on up, Jeffrey. Don't be shy." 
He inched forward as she continued. Jeffrey has brought a scrum scrumptious lunch consistent consisting of chicken salad sandwiches, oriental noodles, baby grapes, iced tea, and fortune cookies. She smiled at him over her glasses. Sounds delicious and sounds like fun. Which? She said, looking back at the crowd. Jeffrey is. He enjoys skate he he enjoys skating he enjoys skateboard skateboarding, skiing and swimming. But latest, he also enjoys a day in the park and watching Humphrey Bogart movies. Humphrey Bogart movies. She turned to him and grinned. They are thick, aren't they? Poor Jeff tried to smile. But you could tell he wanted to die. All right then, said Mrs. McClure as she whipped off her glasses. Her glasses. Do I hear ten? Not only did she hear ten, she heard twelve, fifteen, twenty, and twenty-five too. Going, going, gone, cried Mrs. McClure to the young lady in the purple tunic. Who is that? I asked the girl. I think her name's Tiffany, she said. She's a seventh grader. Really? Wow. I will never have bid yet bid last year, and I, I don't remember bids going up that high either. Narwa eyed me, which tells me that maybe you bid this year. How much you got? I looked at her and almost deserved the ride on the spot. Narwa, I didn't bring money on purpose. My neighbor made me take it, on, take it on the way to school because she owed it to me for eggs and... For eggs? Oh, like Bryce was talking about in the library? Exactly, and I looked at her looking at me and stopped cold. How can you even think about beating on that boy? I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. But I've liked him for so long, Darla. I've liked him since I was seven. And even though I know he's a coward and a sneak and I should never speak to him again, I'm having trouble focusing on that, especially since Charlotte's post is after him. And now I've got this I've got this money burning a hole in my pocket. Well, I can understand the bit of the bit about Shelly Stoles. But if you know that if you know that boy is just a big piece of fluffy cheesecake, then you're gonna regret eating. I can help you with your diet. She put out she put out her hand. Give me the money. I'll hold it for you. No. No? I mean, I can handle this. I've got to handle it. She shook her head. Oh, girl, I'm hurting for you here. I looked back at the stage. The auction was happening so fast. They'd be at Bryce in no time. As the bidding continued, the batter in my head got louder and fit and fear sure. What was I going to do? 